I just roller skated. Well, not just. It was like a couple hours ago now, but I went to go roller skate for the first time outside in a while. So that was fun. I had a really fun time. Um, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. I didn't get any footage because I don't feel comfortable like recording myself roller skating outside because I already am trying to be aware of my surroundings. Um, which is kind of hard because I'm also trying to focus on like not falling on rocks and like breaking a bone. Also trying to like make sure I have good form so I don't pull a muscle. So it's like, uh, it's a lot to focus on and then to just throw my phone into the mix, like making sure like, oh no, you know, my phone is on the ground recording me. Hopefully no one like walks by and tries to take my phone and run away, you know? or whatever, just, which is very unlikely, but I don't know. I think I'm, I might be making a bigger deal of it than it is, but at the same time, just trying to be aware of my surroundings. I found a new parking lot to use for this summer. The one I was going to is like, it's just too populated. I think I've mentioned this before. There's too much pedestrian traffic and like also it's near a bus stop, a couple of bus stops, so it's like, People are getting on and off the bus. You don't know who's gonna walk by. A lot of people like honk at me. I don't know if they're honking at me or just honking in general at someone else maybe to avoid a car accident because that's when you're supposed to honk. I felt like they were honking at me because there there was like no other cars around. It just doesn't feel super safe for someone like me to be roller skating at the place I used to go to. And this place, this parking lot feels better, so. Hopefully, you know, um, it stays that way. <laughs> Probably edit some photos because I did a very short like photo shoot the other night because I feel like I've just, I've been neglecting my photography for a few months now. I'm like, when is the last time I did a self portrait photo shoot? It's been months. And the last one I did, it's not that the photos didn't turn out bad. I just like didn't love, love them, you know? I just feel like it was my best work. But here's the thing that I've been, I've been thinking about lately is you're not always gonna love what you make and that's okay. They can't all be winners in this, you know, the artistic journey. I can't speak for other people's, you know, involvements whatever it is they're pursuing it's a growing process and even once you've like mastered the thing you're probably still gonna make things that you don't necessarily love or you're just like mm, this could be better or mm, you know or maybe you love it one day and then the next day you're like this is terrible Hello friends. I just finished an interview. I feel I feel good about it. For I feel good about interviewing for once. The last few interviews I've had, I've actually done a good job. So I think it's just like you get better with practice. I don't know. And just like kind of treat it like you're having a conversation is what I've heard. I was like watching I've watched videos in the past on like how to do better at interviews. 
but they started to stress me out because for some reason it was a trigger for me. Like they started showing up on my YouTube, like, and it just triggered my anxiety. Like, oh my gosh, I'm freaking out because, oh, now I need to learn this thing. Now I need to learn this. You know what I mean? I just wanted to update you guys on that. So the job pool out here, it's kind of rough. Um, a little bit if you don't like have a degree and like seven years of experience which I'm still in school so um, I don't have seven years of experience really in anything except working with kids and even that I don't I don't even have well professional wise um, I don't have seven years but I have worked with kids for like over seven years it's like hmm well how long does it take to get your teacher's license it was like five years I was like no no ma'am no ham no I feel a little like comforted because um, every now and again on social media, I'll see where people are like, I've applied to like 300 jobs and I just now got an interview. I'm like, okay, like just, is it just hard out here? And I think one of the things is like for certain jobs, if it's an in-person job, like you have to go in person and be like, I applied to this job. Like, did you guys get my application? Are you guys doing walk-in interviews? Like you have to be assertive. Virtual jobs, it's like everyone wants those, right? Everyone wants it. I just like to go to where I have to go, school, appointments and grocery store that's pretty much all I do when I do leave the house and working as far as working like I want to work from home obviously so I have two years in this program and then another two years for my grad program so <laughs> yeah don't ask I'll do a separate video on why it's taking me so long to finish school um no I won't because that's dumb basically I've had to take a few breaks um for the pandemic and for personal reasons. And so that has thrown off my schedule a lot. Like I was supposed to be done with school like two years ago. So <laughs> yeah, but it's okay. I haven't given up and I'm not going to give up because um, school is really important to me. I believe in getting a higher education and that's what I'm gonna do. And praise God that I've made it this far. We'll see what happens. All right, I'm gonna go now, you guys, bye. Hello, friends. I'm backers with another video. Let's see if I can pop my phone up right here. Okay. Hi. I don't know yet if this video is going to be like a vlog vlog. It's probably not. So um, for that reason, let me make this announcement. The beginning of the video is the only vlog portion that is going to be in this video so if you're not interested in me um just talking and sitting here then that's okay and you can go about your day and that's fine no hard feelings but if you decide to stay tuned then i advise grabbing something to eat because we might be here for a while i have tried to refilm this so many times <laughs> in the last like two weeks and things just keep happening. So like, I'm like, oh, I have more to share. I have more to share. And I'm like, okay, should I break it up into like different videos or should I just sit here for 45 minutes and like say all of the things? Um, huh, I should have taken notes. I said I was gonna take notes so that I could stay on track before I even started filming, but I completely forgot. I was like, I'm just gonna go. And that's usually, that's usually my vibe is I usually just go improv, but it's not always the best idea, um, especially because I wasn't very good at improv when I was in theater. So <laughs> let's see. Um, let me just take notes real quick. I guess that's it. That should probably take up everything some life updates, I guess. We are out here living, you know, the the mid 20s quarter life crisis of you know i have to have four different colors of hair and that's that's safe i think right that's you know compared to other things like drugs my mind always goes to drugs because like i think it's just because i watch too much tv and like on tv they're like teens and young adults they just do drugs all day so it could be worse right so voting if you didn't already know uh, if you live in america I don't think there's any like people outside of America that watch my videos, but if so, thanks for joining in. Comment down below where you're from. We're gonna know who our new president is next November. And then um, the, Jan the following January, we will have a new president in office. 
I just wanted to come on here and publicly say I retract every public acknowledgement and support I've ever made of like any presidential candidate. I have a Bernie Sanders 2020 shirt and it's a picture of him getting arrested during a civil rights movement. I was like Bernie Sanders, you know, and I, again, I don't know what kind of dirt maybe that he has, but he didn't win as we saw, like he didn't win. People voted for him um, in the, the primaries, I think is what it's called. He didn't win. Candidates like that, like they don't have a chance at winning. You know what I mean? And so I'm done voting. I'm not gonna support any of the candidates. I'm, you know, I'm just watching it as if it was the Hunger Games out here, right? In my opinion, voting doesn't matter. Anything that happens, God allows. So, you know, Donald Trump was the president. Um, God allowed that. And so whoever gets into office next, obviously it's gonna be someone God allowed to get into office. However, I don't think like I need to participate in voting. I just don't feel like I need to because I'm convinced that my vote doesn't matter. I don't know if it ever did and I don't know if it ever will. And at the end of the day, all of these people are trifling. So it's just a waste of time. That's me. I'm not saying that you shouldn't go out there and vote. And I know people are like, especially black people are like, oh my gosh, like your ancestors like fought for you to vote and everything like that. That's nice. I appreciate all of the black people who fought to get the right to vote and you know all of the black people who are trying to make a difference it's just not for me anymore i'm so sorry again not saying you shouldn't vote not saying i'm not tell i'm not trying to force you not to vote i'm just saying i had to come on here and say like i'm no longer voting and i had to say that because i think it was um the 20 the 2020 election when i was like posting on my instagram like oh my gosh vote for joe biden i am ashamed i am ashamed and you know what god help joe biden but like it was a mistake to vote for joe biden it literally was N and again not that i think my vote even mattered but um whoever you know the big brother is that is like you know making these little plans for who's going to be in office they use joe biden this is this is what i feel they use joe biden because look at all of the chaos that has happened under his administration and what is he doing like i'm sorry and it is sad but i think this is the truth joe biden is not fit to be president because of you know, not be not necessarily because of his age, but the way that his age is affecting him because not everyone who is Joe Biden's age acts like Joe Biden, right? It's just been like a significant like cognitive decline and that's that's all I'm gonna say about it. So I don't think I don't think he you know, I don't think it was a good idea to vote for him. And I voted for him. I retract it and I've, I again I'm ashamed because I'm like, why? They hyped up Kamala and Joe Biden so much and like a lot of us took the bait. Not saying that like, oh, I wish I would have voted for Trump. I wish I just wouldn't have voted at all because I just feel ashamed that I even participated in the entire thing. You know, I'm gonna end it there. All right, let's go to the serious stuff now. Man, it's been really hard for me to like say this out loud because um, I'm still traumatized by it, which once I share with you guys what it is, you're probably gonna be like that, like it didn't need to be that serious. Like your feelings about it didn't need to be that serious. But um, it is for me. So please be soft and kind to me. Thank you. Um, so as you guys saw from my last video, I went out of town for my birthday with my mom and we had a lot of fun. Um, it was a really blessed trip and I like, I had a lot of fun. When I got back from the trip, not too many days later, I woke up in the morning and I was like, mm, I feel a little weird, like I feel a little off. I think I had a headache. Um, I think I was having like, I just felt like weird in my body. And I think I was probably having an anxiety attack because like at some point during the pandemic, I just started like being overly anxious about my health. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I'm getting sick. And so I was like, okay, let me just take a test, a COVID test just to see, you know, to make sure. And I tested positive for COVID. And this was like the very beginning of June. And I was like, I was devastated. This was the first time um, I had ever gotten COVID. 
uh, I haven't gotten it again since. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I pray that I never get it again. This was like the first time I had gotten COVID, which thank you, Lord, because technically at this point in June, the pandemic is like officially declared over. So I went throughout the entire pandemic without getting COVID. Thank you, Jesus. That's nothing but the blood of Jesus, y'all. And I don't have the vaccine. Y'all can't tell me Jesus isn't Lord. Y'all can't tell me the blood doesn't work because look. <laughs> and it was still like really devastating for me because I just felt like, like why? Like, <laughs> um, and I was, I broke down in tears. I called my mom because the thing about the virus is like, you don't really know how it's gonna affect you. At least that's like the narrative they've they've pushed throughout the pandemic is like, oh, it affects everyone differently. And like, oh, if you don't have the vaccine, you're gonna die and all of this, which I never, I never believed that like, if you didn't have the vaccine, that meant you were gonna die because I was like, I just, that just sounded like they wanted people to get the vaccine. But I was still scared because like I had never had the virus. And so I was like, okay, what's going to happen? Like, what is this going to be? Like, you know what I mean? I had it for the full 10 days. Um, I had like talked to the advice nurse like multiple times and I had like multiple doctor's appointments over the phone to just like, you know, um, track my symptoms and like figure out like how should I be taking care of myself and everything, what to look out for. So you can test again in five days. And if you don't have it, if you test negative, then you should be good. Um, but if you test positive still after five days, then, you know, go the full 10 days and test again. And I was like, okay, so day five rolls around. By day five, I'm like pretty much like, I think I was like for the most part feeling better, but I was still testing positive. And so I was like, oh, what the heck? I think I tested again like day seven, day nine, and then day 10. I could see like once I got to like day 10 or day nine, like the line on the rapid at home COVID test was like really faint, which means I think, I guess it means like you're not as infectious or like the, the virus is like almost done running its course, right? I eventually did test like negative to the point where there was no like faint T line or anything like that. Thank you, Jesus. Um, my symptoms, I would say were like really, Compared to how I've heard other people have had COVID, like I would say my symptoms were mild. The worst symptoms I had, I think, were the fatigue. I was so tired and like, I just felt really weak. Like I could barely like eat my, oh, and my appetite. I had no appetite at all. Like it was a chore to eat. And that sucked because like, <laughs> like I had the food. Thank you, Lord. And my mom would get me food. But like, it was just like a chore to eat because I was tired and I literally like had no appetite. I wasn't throwing up, thank you, Lord. I haven't thrown up in like years. I haven't, like the last time I threw up, I think I was like eight years old. And it was because I had food poisoning from some ramen noodles. I did get a sore throat. I can't remember which day. I think it was like day four, maybe day three. And I had a really bad sore throat. Like I couldn't eat any oranges because the the citrus from the oranges would make my throat burn so much. Like it was like the worst throat burn I've ever had. <laughs> like I don't even think I've had strep throat before and I don't even think when I had strep throat that my throat was hurting that bad after eating those oranges. The sore throat only lasts like a couple of days. Um, I did have a high fever for like the first few days. But other than that, like I would say those were like the worst symptoms I had. Um, even my cough, like I didn't have a severe cough. So yeah, I would say the worst symptoms were the loss of appetite, the, um, the sore throat and the fatigue. Those were the worst symptoms. And just the mental, like the mental of having like COVID because you have to stay in your room. I had to like pretty much stay in my room unless I had to like go and get food. And then when I had to go get food, I would have to wear a mask and I tried to wipe everything down with like disinfectant wipes and make sure everything was clean. And like, uh, and then I also have a loft bed. So like I was literally like climbing in and out of bed like multiple times a day, like to go to the restroom and stuff like that or to come down out of my bed and eat. And so, that was like like that just added to the fatigue but yeah the mental part is really what did it because one again 
I didn't know how it was going to affect me. I was like, each day I was like, okay, like what symptoms am I going to have today? Um, also like being locked in my room, not being able to see my mom because I didn't want her to get sick, which she did not. Thank you, Jesus. Like it's a miracle that she did not get sick. And I praise the Lord for that because I know that was nothing but Jesus. Like I can wipe stuff all day long, but at the end of the day, I'm sure there was stuff like I didn't wipe. I'm sure there was like germs somewhere. You know what I mean? And she didn't get sick. Thank you, Lord. I don't know how anyone else's like experience has been if they've had COVID, but I was so happy like when I finally was better and like my test was fully negative. I was like, thank you, Jesus. Like I didn't have to go to the hospital. I didn't catch like pneumonia. I um, didn't have to like get any prescription medication. All I took was Tylenol and like vitamins that we have here at the house and like um, emergency, which is like a vitamin C drink and drink lots of water and got sleep and prayed and my mom prayed for me. Thank you, Jesus. And I know you guys are probably like, some of you guys might be like, oh, well, Journey, like you're young and healthy. So like, it, you know, makes sense that you didn't really get that sick. But like, there's literally people who are young and healthy who have gotten COVID and have gotten like very sick. And so I'm just, I'm really grateful because that was very traumatic for me. The effects of it on my mind are still here because and you would think like, oh, like after that, you know, after coming through that, like I, you know, I feel better because I'm like, okay, well now I have the antibodies and like, I know that it's not, you know, that serious. Um, like it didn't have a serious effect on my body. Thank you, Lord. I actually ended up being like more anxious, I think after I got better because now I'm like, oh my gosh, anytime any abnormality or something I perceive as an abnormality is happening in my body, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to take a test. Like I have to make sure I'm not getting sick. And um, that's not, that's not good. <laughs> like that's not healthy. I actually like just came out of um, like a two to three week long panic attack. <laughs> like it was like a few weeks after I had already gotten better from COVID like earlier this month. And I just, I was sitting on the sofa one evening i was playing uh sims which is a, a video game on my computer and all of a sudden i just felt really anxious like i just it felt like like the bible says that god has not given us a spirit of fear so fear like intense anxiety and stuff like that that's like a spirit from the enemy from the devil it literally felt like something just washed over me and i just got completely anxious and every single day after that, when I would wake up and all throughout each day for the next like two to three weeks, I was like extremely anxious every day. It was really bad. Like I couldn't sleep. Like I was not sleeping at night. I was waking up or I couldn't fall asleep. I had to start taking melatonin gummies because I literally couldn't stay asleep and I couldn't fall asleep because of the anxiety. And I was just like, where in the world did this come from? Because I'm thinking like, I've been better now for like two weeks. Why am I feeling so anxious all of a sudden? I didn't do anything to like trigger the anxiety. So I was just like, where in the world did this come from? And it was, it was, I've never experienced um, anxiety symptoms that severe in my entire life. Because every day I was waking up, my heart is racing. I'm like, I'm trembling and I'm like, having like hot flashes and stuff like that. And I'm just like freaking out about every single thing. It was really bad. I, it, I don't know. And then I just woke up one day after like two to three weeks. Um, and I was like, okay, I feel normal today. It was lasting all day. That's why I'm saying like, it was like, I was just in panic mode every day, all day. It was terrible. And I know it was just like the enemy that was like coming against me because I, cause God blessed me to get better from COVID. And I was like, just being happy and like feeling really grateful. Um, and you know, the enemy wanted to try to convince me like you're every, the thing was like, as I was going through this panic mode, like the thing in my head was like, there's something wrong with me. Like I'm getting sick with something. And so what would happen is I would like go to my room and like start panicking. I think, you know, the goal, 
um, was to just try to get me to be by myself and like have me worry so that I couldn't focus on doing anything else. But thank you, Lord, that I that he healed me, he delivered me from whatever attack that was. And I've been feeling a lot better. Thank you, Jesus. Like I almost forgot what it felt like to feel normal because I was like every day it was like, I don't know if anyone's ever had a panic attack, um, but like it literally feels like the end of the world. <laughs> and so like imagine, and you're not like panic attacks aren't supposed to last for like super long. They're usually pretty short, but it literally just felt like a prolonged panic attack or like I was on the edge of having a panic attack all day. That's the best way I can describe it. It's been a lot. <laughs> But the good news that came from, I forgot to mention this, which is like, oh my gosh, freaking out. I'm still freaking out when I think about it because I'm like, ah, ah, it's so cool. Um, so the cool thing or the blessed thing that happened um, while I had COVID, it was like, I can't remember which day it was. I think it was like the eighth or ninth day. Um, I was on the phone talking to my mom and she was like sharing a testimony that she had like of an experience that she had had with the Lord either like the day before or a couple of days prior. And like, as she was sharing the testimony with me, like I literally just like went into a praise and like was filled with the Holy Spirit. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, ah! Cause like before that I had never like been like baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so I was like, dude, what the heck? It was so, oh my gosh. And like, I have literally like, I don't know, I, you know, you can't explain it. But like, after that happened, like I, like my whole like walk with God has like changed. Like, I just feel like I, he like, he took me to another level. I don't even know how to explain it. That literally happened while I was sick. And it was, it was just crazy. Cause I was like, wow, like now God, like, I was like, whoa, this is good. Like, it was awesome. So, um, that's a blessing that came out of it. Um, also something else, I didn't even put this on my notes cause I completely forgot, but I deleted my, um, my TikTok because I just felt like that's what God was telling me, like something I needed to do because I was spending too much time on TikTok, social media in general, but like really with TikTok, I was like getting, I followed a lot of artists on there and so it was hard to like not compare myself to these other people and not even just artists but just like other people's lives like and it was just i was following like almost a thousand people on tiktok i think also like i followed accounts that would post like sad sad content and i was like why like and it would just make me sad and so it was like it just really wasn't producing anything good for me and I think that's why God told me to delete TikTok. <laughs> that's something else good that happened while I had COVID. Something else I deleted. Um, my personal Instagram, my personal Instagram account. I deleted that account because like, again, just like I was following a lot of like fashion influencers and stuff and just like, like I need deliverance from comparison. So <laughs> like, it was just a trigger for me because I was following like all of these fashion people and I was like, oh my gosh, they're so cool. And like, why can't I be cool? And all these like rich celebrities and stuff. And I was like, oh, why can't I be rich and everything like that? You know what I mean? Just like, it was like, it was just an opportunity for me to compare and be sad. And so again, uh, wasn't producing anything good in my life. So I had to delete it. I just have my photography account again and um oh no not true I have my skate account which I might delete that too because like I basically unfollowed all of the <laughs> all of the skaters that I followed on there because a lot of them stopped posting content some of them were just like posting scandalous stuff too and so I was like I don't feel like comfortable watching this you know what I mean so yeah I might delete my skate account as well I don't really use it anyway I mean yeah I don't really use it so so those are the things that, you know, God um, had me do while I was sick and just like let go of a lot of things, honestly. Excuse me. And I'm like thinking like, OK, maybe that's one of the reasons he allowed me to get sick was because he needed to get me like into 
that mentality so that I could hear from him so that I could hear what he was telling me to do and yeah I feel like ever since then like ever since I've gotten better like my I feel like my relationship with the Lord has like really flourished and um so yeah I'm just grateful that grateful again you know that he didn't let me get like super sick I'm grateful that I got better like in a relatively short amount of time um, I'm grateful that my mom didn't get sick. I'm grateful that um, my relationship with him was able to grow even more. And I'm just, I'm just excited. I'm grateful that he filled me with the Holy Spirit. Like, I'm just so excited. Like, oh my gosh. So yeah, the, the whole COVID testimony, that was like the main thing that I wanted to share. Um, and as I predicted, this video is almost, well, this portion of the video is almost 45 minutes long. We're at 40 minutes. I wanted to share that with you guys because I felt like, um, I had to give glory to God. Like, because look, people, you know, the COVID virus, it doesn't like discriminate. And so I'm just, I know that if it wasn't for Jesus, I literally like would not have gotten better and it could have been a lot worse. So I just feel like I needed to come on here and share that with you guys and also share like how God used it to um, take me higher in my relationship with him. And yeah, so that's pretty much all I think I wanted to share. It was hard for me to share that because like anytime I think about like where I was at when I was sick, um, I was just like, my mind was so overwhelmed and so like I just even thinking about it like just makes me feel a little bit like I don't know emotional like it's hard for me to actually verbalize it because I'm like I go back to that mentality and I'm just like oh my gosh <laughs> like I was so I was literally so scared and just anxious and I'm and it's like oh you know God doesn't want us to feel that way like, he doesn't want us to be, like, scared and all of that. He doesn't want us to forget that he's there. Like, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And, like, and I, yeah, it was just hard for me to trust God, like, and while I was sick. Like, I trusted him, but at the same time, I was, like, going back and forth. You know, which is that really trusting him? You know what I mean? I was, like, going back and forth with, like, oh, my gosh, I'm so scared. Like, what's going to happen and everything? And it was just really stressful because um, it was like, okay, like, like I went through this entire time without getting sick. Why did I have to get sick now? You know what I mean? And I still don't really know fully. Um, I see how like God allowed good things to come of it. Um, but like some stuff that God allows, we're like never going to really understand because our minds... I don't believe our minds can fathom and like it's maybe it's just not for us to know keep me in your prayers that um <laughs> that i will just continue to walk in um freedom from fear because honestly that's my biggest like my biggest issue is literally fear i just yeah just pray for me that <laughs> that i will walk in the freedom that jesus has called us to because who the sun sets free is free indeed okay so like, I I gotta get it together. Like, I'm trying. I thank you guys for coming. Jesus loves you and Jesus saves. Like, that's, if you didn't take anything away from this, um, I hope that you received, like, that Jesus is real. Jesus is a healer. Jesus loves you. Jesus saves. Um, if you don't already know the Lord, I pray that you would ask him that you could have an experience with him so that you can give your life to him because Jesus is real and he loves you so much and he wants to have a relationship with you and I guarantee that it'll be the best decision you've ever made like your life is never going to be life is never going to be easy so don't think like oh once I accept Jesus everything's going to be like super easy and it's going to be a walk in the park like the enemy will probably come at you even harder um, but you will have the most powerful person in the entire universe, um, fighting for you and in you, because when you accept Jesus, he gives you your Holy, he gives you the Holy Spirit. All right, I gotta go. Bye. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to, 
I don't know. Welcome back. Of course, I have to get everything together because I'm never prepared. I just turned the camera on and I'm like, hey. Good news. Let's, you know what? Let's just share some good news real quick. I haven't drank coffee in like at least like three months. It's been some months now, probably even longer because we went out of town for my birthday. I had decaf coffee. And before that, I was like, when I was drinking it, I was like, wow, it's actually been a couple months since I haven't had coffee. That was in May. So it's probably been like a good, like maybe five months. Maybe it's been some months. Okay. So I don't remember the exact date that like, I was like, okay, we're done for real. But thank you, Lord. I have been delivered from coffee addiction. It's just not for me. Caffeine. I've said many times before also sorry that my hair is like white it's because i have hair powder in my hair it's probably gonna take all day to dry but anyway um it's just not for me because i one i'm already an anxious person so if i have anything with caffeine in it i'm going to be bouncing off the walls or having a mental breakdown and then it just like it messed up my stomach completely i would say the peak of my coffee addiction was like mid to end 2021 to like the end of 2022 so a good like I don't know a good like year and a half um I yeah again I haven't drank it like that much this year like when before I stopped drinking it I mean like January because I was still drinking it in January I don't remember what month I stopped but like the amount that I have had this year, like didn't compare to that year. You know what I, it, hopefully that makes sense. That's what did it because I was drinking coffee every single day. Sometimes I would have multiple cups a day, usually like at a maximum three cups um, because like one cup is enough for me, but I don't know. I was just felt like I needed to drink more, you know? And you know, it's weird. I guess to make a big deal out of it because coffee is such a normalized drink or drug. It is a drug because it's caffeine and caffeine is a drug. It's just, you know, it's normalized and accepted. But yeah, and I'm not judging anyone for drinking coffee. So please don't, you know, sit up there and be like, oh my gosh, like Journey doesn't want us to drink coffee. I'm just giving my experience. It wasn't for me. Not that I don't love how coffee tastes and I still love coffee flavored ice cream, which I'm wondering now, like, does that have caffeine in it? That's an excellent question. Yeah, it just wasn't for me. I can't, like my body rejects coffee and my mental state of mind rejects coffee <laughs> because it just makes me like way too on edge, which I'm usually already on edge. So I can't, I can't do it. And I thank God because it really took um, it really took the power of God to <laughs> to deliver me from coffee because like it tastes so good, you know. I just love the flavor of coffee, and I love the smell of it too. And just like I don't know, you just feel cool like when you're drinking it. I feel like I feel like a thirteen year old in like some really corny like sitcom that's talking about you know, their first time smoking a cigarette or something. Like that episode of Full House. I don't know if anyone like watches Full House. But um I think it was Stephanie. She like started smoking cigarettes or like she was about to start smoking and like the girls in the girls' bathroom were like, Yeah, it's cool and everything like that, you know? And it's just like that's like <laughs> that's like that's how I feel like I sound right now explaining um how I felt when I would drink coffee. I was like, Yeah, I'm cool. And maybe it's just because I got to I got into it so late in the game, I feel. Like I wasn't drinking coffee regularly before twenty twenty one. I really wasn't even drinking it at all. So yeah, it's just funny. Like, I don't know. Decaf coffee, by the way, like, it does not taste the same. It has a bit of a strange aftertaste. Maybe it was the brand. I don't even remember what brand it was, but... And I'm pretty sure even decaf still has, like, a small amount of caffeine. And I don't even want to risk it because, look, honey, it's been hard. So, I was just reading some of my old journals, which, fun fact about me, 
I've been journaling for quite a while since I was in elementary school. I'm not sure what age I was when I got my first journal, but I distinctly remember my mom gifted me a journal um, with like this little angel cartoon on it. And I still have that journal. It was like my first, like, not my first journal, but like the first one I started writing in consistently. And I've been writing in journals ever since. Like I have... I don't I don't even know how many I have that I've literally completed over the years of my life. And I was just reading um one of my old ones from when I was in the 5th and 6th grade and man y'all elementary I'm so sorry to anyone who's watching this who knew me in elementary school because I was actually a menace and I didn't even realize how much of a menace I was, but I was a menace. And that is made very clear in the writings. <laughs> We're all different people than what we were when we were kids. That's not the part that I wanted to kind of like emphasize. I picked up my other journal that I'm about to be finished with. I only have two or three more blank pages in it that I started in 20, like the end of 2019 and now it's 2023. So um, I was reading earlier entries in that and I was like, man, even though this was only like four years ago, 2019, like, I've changed a lot like I didn't think that I grew that much um I didn't yeah I just didn't think I like went through much like growth as far as like becoming more um emotionally and spiritually mature between 2019 and now but I actually have and that's also made very clear through the entries because I was like oh my goodness like there was just there was a lot happening and um just like my mentality about things has like changed a lot in a short amount of time and for that I'm really grateful because I'm like wow like yay we're out here like we're out here growing yay for growth some stuff like I completely forgot that I wrote about and I was like oh wait I did write about this that's that's great because I'm trying to get back on track with like journaling more consistently because I feel like there's just so many things that happen um, in my life that I like I need to keep track because my brain is not going to hold everything. Highly recommend um, journaling because it's just it's fun even if you feel like you don't really have that much to say like I'm very long winded. I don't know if that, <laughs> in my opinion, I feel like that's made pretty clear through my videos because all of my videos are like at least 20 minutes long. But when it comes to writing, I'm like even more long winded. My entries like for like one day, it's like two to three pages and it'll be just like, it's only 11 a.m. You know, <laughs> like I have a lot, <laughs> I have a lot to say. I say that to say like, it doesn't have to be that. If the reason you haven't gotten into journaling is because you're like, well, I don't have that much to say. Like one, you don't, you don't you won't know until you start writing it might take a little bit but like just just pick up the pencil or pick up the pen i recommend pen because you know pencil who uses pencils anymore um <laughs> and just go and see like what what ends up on the paper but even if like there's not that much to say I think it's still a good activity to do and if you're just jotting down like a sentence or two. It's just therapeutic. You know why they all the therapists recommend journaling? Because it is therapeutic and it actually does help you. So, you know, even if it's just like stupid little, stupid little blurbs, just do it. And also something that's very funny that I'm not ashamed to admit anymore. I'm a terrible speller. Like, <laughs> elementary school is like, okay, you know, it's fine. Like kids aren't very good at spelling like some of the words like the understanding of how the word was pronounced was there but like this the execution and you know what low-key it's because the english language just doesn't make any sense i am now 25 and i still cannot spell very well i was in the spelling bee at my school and i think i was like the third person to get eliminated so there you go that was in elementary school, but still, like, if I was in it now, I'd probably be, like, the fifth person to get eliminated. So, I'm not ashamed, and that's okay, but I just wanted to share that because I thought it was a little funny. Thank you all for joining. I hope that this was, at the least, as I always say, very funny because I think... I watch, I watch these videos back and I laugh at myself a lot, and I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm... 
I don't know. I have a sensitive funny bone. And so I laugh at a lot of things, honestly. But I'm going to go. Thanks for being here. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.